Hey there, adventurers. I'm Norwolf. Welcome to my role-playing game realm and to session 16 of my Powers and Perils solo play. So, when last we left our intrepid adventurers, they had uh, just headed out from Kerketon after spending the week there. Uh, they've either repaired, had their equipment repaired or replaced. And at the same time, they were also provided with two uh, war horses, one for Raffin and one for Marazan, since the two of them are marginally capable uh, uh, in horsemanship. Whereas Gildor is still learning uh, horsemanship, so he's being led along on his horse as, as usual. The first day out, they had camped just uh, into the hills here. And then on the second day, they uh, proceeded kind of in a northeast direction and had come across a, a depression in the, in the hills uh, that was forested. And as they started to explore it, they came across a bit of a, a rough trail. And at the, towards the end of that trail, or to, and kind of towards the end of the, uh, the little valley or depression in the hills, they came across a, an old dilapidated shack that uh, was partially obscuring a, a, a decent sized cave entrance behind it. I had, I think, provided this image last time. Uh, it's a rough approximation of what it kind of looks like. It's actually probably set out a bit more farther from, from the opening. One of the programs I was using called, uh, actually, I don't remember what it was called. I have to look that up. Actually, it's called Dragon Map Maker. And I, uh, Picked it up sometime back on Steam. It's, I think, still in early access or something. It's a little, little funky to work with, but it does, although it represents uh, the, the maps you create in it, you, you visualize them in 3D when it actually exports it, it just comes out in 2D. Uh, so this kind of gives you a rough idea of what, and of course, the roof on the shack is missing, but little trail that leads up to a shack, and then in the back there's a cave. And uh, let's see, the top-down map of this area looks something like that. So our characters come in at the bottom here and notice this shack ahead of them. They see some orcs, a couple of orcs outside, probably an orc in a window or something up in the, in the second floor. And we were going to start off with determining whether... Uh, Either, either side is surprise. So basically, I'm going to give the characters here a chance that they've seen the shack and can duck off into the, the woods before they're seen and maybe make their way up. Um, and we'll see how that goes. And then I'll also uh, basically roll for these guys to see if they've noticed the characters. So I was humming and hawing a bit about how I wanted to approach this encounter. Whether I wanted to do some sort of an observation role or um, some other role uh, associated with that. And then I thought, you know what, I might as well just stick with the rules as much as they are there and uh, interpret from that point. So I'm going to flip over to the PDF here. and I'm looking at the encounter ambush rules. So basically, the, it's a forested area. Um, so I'm going to say, so the base chance is 30% for, for the ambush with the highest DL being added to that. So for our group here, Gilder, I'm sure has the highest DL, which is going to be forest of nine. So he'll have a 39% chance of ambushing these guys and our encounter that's in the shack. <coughs> Their EL in for survival or survivals in general is going to be EL2. So, and the way I'll interpret this is if our group ambushes the orcs, then basically they'll be, be able to have snuck up on the cabin or this little shack with um, not close enough to, to basically do that ambush so that they can move in and attack, likely the orcs that are out front. And if the 
orcs that are at the shack managed to ambush the party. That means the, you know, as the party's moved in to try and sneak up on the shack, the orcs have actually moved out into the, into the, uh, trees and bushes as well and actually get the drop on, on our party. And if they both ambush, you know, according to the rules, the, the encounters avoided, uh, a little hard to avoid this since the building doesn't go anywhere. So it'll basically be as if nobody ambushed anybody. And then we start with our typical uh, encounter distance. Uh, the basic, basic rules for the encounter distance has the encounter being, uh, what is it? A die six plus 10 hexes away which is, uh, and those are based on 10 foot hexes. So when I, and I've also got my own uh, light modification to the encounter distances based on the train type. And it turns out the forest is die six plus 10 on my uh, modified encounter distances as well. Um, so let's do our ambushes. So we have a 39% chance for uh, Gildor in the group, and they do not. And our orcs, 44, and they had a 32% chance, so that's a no as well. So we are starting at 110, 110 feet. So, no, sorry, 10 hex, 11 hexes, uh, which on this five foot hex scale is going to be 22 hexes. So let me move our characters in place here. I'll assume they'll, they were trying to come up the side through the forest and were essentially unsuccessful. So we'll pick up with the characters at uh, the appropriate distance from the shack with the orcs out front. And we'll see how it goes from there. Okay, I've got things set up. They're about 22 hexes apart uh, from the Basically from uh, Raffin to our little orc friends here. Uh, obviously they, there are some other creatures inside the building that the characters don't necessarily know about. Although there's a little bit of a line of sight through the window where they can at least see one orc just inside the building. Uh, everybody, everybody's holding bows at the moment. And uh, we get into our First phase of combat. I've got the orcs uh, listed out here. There's a uh, chaos wizard inside the house or in, inside the shack that the characters aren't aware of. We'll see how that goes with the um, battling uh, another wizard. And like I said, we are on phase one. So phase one, uh, mana allocation. Look at our handy little procedure chart here. So phase sequence, we have mana allocation. We have missile fire magic effect if it's ready and then movement maybe. So I don't believe, yeah, I don't think uh, Gildor is going to do any spell casting just yet. Probably wait till there's uh, whatever is a little bit closer in range. We will do some missile fire. I think at 21 hexes, we look at uh, the longbows. Actually, Gildor is probably going to use his magic. No his magic bow. A bow at 21 hexes is, sorry, at 11 hexes, because it's halved, um, is going to be long range. And for the guys, the other two using long bows, that 21 is going to be long range as well, but they're on the minus 10 line versus Gildar's uh, minus 18 line. So does the oh, and then of course our 
Orcs are shooting back. They have bows. Have EL three with bows. So they're probably going to concentrate fire on. Not knowing whether or not they're going to be able to actually hit and or kill an orc in the first phase here. They're going to concentrate fire on orc number two. So let's start with Gildor. And likewise, the orcs, the two orcs are probably going to concentrate on Raffin because he's ever so slightly, well, slightly in front of the other two. So Gildor is on the minus 18 line. He is subtracting one for his EL and six for the magic. So minus seven to his roll. So 20 on the minus 18 line is going to be a severe hit. Oh, sorry, minus 18 line. The 20 is actually going to be a myth. So the other guys on the minus 10 line have Raffin with a bow skill of five, so he's subtracting five. And Marizan with a skill of seven. Right. So Raffin minus seven. Be a miss. And Mirzan minus seven thirty. Double check that. I think it's minus seven. I said minus seven. It's going to be thirty on the minus minus ten line, which is going to be a shield hit exactly. And these guys are using the bows at the moment, so no shields. That is going to be a hit. Now Mirzan is doing d six plus one. Six points. Number two. Number two is wearing scale mail, which is AV2, and have a natural armor value of two as well. So that's four points being reduced. So he takes three points of damage. Here's so three points with from Marizan with the longbow. Now our two orcs fire back at Raffin. They are on the minus 18 line as well. Back in two from the roll. So the first one, 12. 10, that's going to be a shield hit, so that's a hit. And 44, and that's going to be a, a miss. They are doing a die six plus zero for bow. That's going to be one point, which bounces off the chainmail armor that uh, Raffin is wearing. Okay, uh, movement melee. So I'm going to say that a couple of the creatures inside are going to come out and run towards our characters here. So, oops, I open the door. Five, ten, fifteen, thirty. Guys going five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty. And our guy shot, so they're not moving anywhere. We are on phase uh, two. Uh, we are going to do one more round, at least one more round of missile fire here. Now they're going to concentrate their attacks on, what's this one? The pick Raff in here. That's going to be 100 feet or 105 feet. Raffin Yes, that we switch fire to Gildor. 
100 and 105 basically runs up to 110 so yes they're all going to shoot at fork number four here minus 18 line minus seven again for gilder that's going to be a miss on the minus 10 lines actually oh actually i did it wrong last time um longbow should have been on the was a medium range for uh, for raffin and marizan would have been on the zero line i guess i'll break that for this time around um so the zero line that minus five 55 so 50 is going to be a hit exactly and for Marizan, he's minus seven. So that's going to be a 15 on the zero line. It's going to be a hit as well. So two more hits, uh, or two hits, I guess, on number four. Raffin is doing a die six plus one. And Marizan's doing a die six plus one as well. So that is going to bounce, and that's going to be four points, which is also going to bounce off the armor plus natural armor of the. Of the Our two orcs are firing back. They're still on the minus 18 line with their bows, long bows. So the first one, four. That's going to be a two on the minus 18 line. That is going to be a hit on Raffin again, and that's going to bounce. And the other guy, zero zero. Second there, I was worried. That's going to be a, a miss as well. And movement in melee, melee. This is phase two. So oh, five, ten, twenty-five. 30. They are making their way forward. I think all our guys are going to move up next phase as well. We are on phase three. Uh, missile fire. Our two orcs shooting at Raffin. Minus 18 line. So 67 is going to miss, and 8 on this 18 line is going to... Oh, as these guys are moving up, of course, they've pulled off their shields and weapons. Uh, so that's actually going to be a shield hit on Raffin. And if I remember correctly, I don't believe they can actually damage a shield. 12, so they need to do 7 points of damage. I guess if he rolls a 6... Uh, that's going to be not enough to damage the shield. Actually, arrows can't damage the shield. And we are in movement in melee again. So, this phase, they are moving three, three, so 30 feet. Thirty and thirty there. These guys are going five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. And uh, yeah, so next round or next phase, we are doing missile fire again, except this time. No, let's actually get our yeah I guess our casings are fine and fine okay so this guy is shooting at Raffin again at 80 feet 80 feet for a bow is medium range oops no 80 yes 
medium range at my on so on the minus six line, and they are minus two, minus three to the roll. Right, their bows bow yell is three. Eighty is going to be a miss, and forty-one is going to be a miss as well. I think they are going to switch over to their other weapons at this point and likely charge forward as well. So, on our movement in melee phase or, or part of the phase. Raffin moves up to there. He moves up to there. He'll move up to there. Um, just zoom in here a bit. So Raffin, oops. Arizan and Gildor are gonna attack orc, orc number four and Raffin is gonna attack orc number three. Yeah, split up their attack spit. So these two get uh, minus five because of the two of them attacking the one orc. And we actually have some movement out here. It is facing going the right way. And this guy will come out here as well. Facing the right way. A little hard to see those little pointers, but it's, it's there. Okay, um, let's do our attacks here. So, um, order priority. These guys are wielding swords. The sword is going to be the orcs that is are wielding swords, so they're order nine. They're kind of slow. Gildor is swinging with his magic scimitar. His attack priority is five. Raffin's attack priority with his sword is five as well. And Marazan's is four with her broadsword. So Marizan's going to go first. Um, works. ECV is four and their OCV is six. So Marizan is OCV nine against the four is going to be on the plus five line. He is subtracting EL seven plus six, so 13 plus another five for the multiple attackers on number four. So that's going to be Minus 18 to her roll. And that's going to be minus something, so that's going to be a deadly hit. And I'll just roll for... Actually, no, let's resolve her deadly first. So she's doing 3d10 plus 11 points. Uh, let's see, 20, 31 points. That is going to be more than enough to kill the orc. And I said that is orc number four. So he has a DTV minus three, so he's got actually only do 20 points of damage to him. That is Mirzan with the broadsword. Um, and this is all essentially happening roughly at the same time. Gildor is swinging. He will swing at the creature or gets dropped. And he has a skill of zero? Really? But he would have gotten yeah, zero. Alright. Skill of zero. He's subtracting six for the magic. Uh, his OCV is Seven, he's on the plus three line. And six. Uh, 
70 something. Nope. Yes. So number four is dead. And I will just get rid of him. Easier to see on the screen. Uh, Raffin will swing at his orc. So Raffin is OCV 10, so he's on the plus six line. He is subtracting uh, seven and four for the sword, so 11. That's going to be a five on the plus six line. That's going to be a severe hit. Oh, sorry. What I forgot with Arizan is that 31 points actually does point of damage to her board. And she has a, that was 31, so a minus the fatigue value. She has a 10% chance of breaking her sword. Ooh, close. 26. That zero almost rolled over. All right. So Raffin with a spear hit, he's doing a d10 plus 9. And that's going to be 15. So these quarks are a severe hit. Uh, let's see, 82, natural armor value 2, and metal helm of 2. So that's going to be 6 points reduced on there. When nine points of damage gets through on number three. Raffin with his back sword. And number three will swing back. Um, 34 might be enough to hit. Raffin has a DCV of nine. These guys have an OCV of 6, so they're on the minus 3 line. They are subtracting 2, but adding Raffin's shield skill. Well, that's what I messed up on the previous attacks, was the shield skills. Uh, mind you, with a minus, whatever that was for the hit, no shield would have, any shield skill would, have, would not have helped that. It was 2 and 4, so he's adding 4, so... That's two. So 36 on the 36 on the minus three line. There's going to be a shield hit. And they are doing uh, D6 plus one. And the weapon strength bonus zero, so d6, d6 plus one. And that's going to be two points, which bounces off the arm. And that's that for that phase. Uh, e. Phase. Phase four. Do we have any mana allocation? I don't think Gilder is going to do any magic this phase. And Kelgan is probably not going to do any magic this phase yet either. The range for our archers is 70 feet. And... Yeah, so 70 feet with a bow is going to be medium range, so minus 6 still. Minus 3 to the roll. 1 minus 6 length. It's going to be a severe hit on Raffin. So die 10 plus... Die 10 plus half... Uh, no strength bonus on the bow, so weapon strength bonus is zero, half the yell, round up, so 10 plus 2. And that's going to be 12 points, wow. 
So Raffin takes. Uh, Chainmail is going to be three. He's going to be five. Twelve. So twelve. Yeah. So it's going to be seven points of damage. And I don't think the arrow is going to damage the armor. And the other arrow, that's going to be a miss. Right. Okay, let's get on with movement. In our corner here, he'll move up and go to there. Actually, they won't be able to get on either side of them. The orc will just keep moving. So we'll assume that they end up there. Gildor shuffles to the side a bit. Uh, yeah, he'll shuffle there and wait for next round. Actually, no, he'll go over to this side. Yeah. What? He's going to move there. He's going to move there. He's going to help attack this guy. Meanwhile, this is phase four. These guys are only moving uh, 20 feet this rain, this phase. Let's do shot. And he's going 30. Goes to there. Okay. 5, 10, 15. 40 feet. To the okay. Right. So let's resolve our attacks. Starting with Marazan. Is the first swing here. And a 0 6 is going to be with a whole bunch of minuses, another deadly hit. Ouch. Um, so what was she? Plus 11. So that's 20, 33 points. Another point of damage on her weapon. As a. He broke her weapon. That's not fun. He looks a little disappointed. Um, but she has done enough to kill orc number three. And number three had three points of damage, so she can only do a total of 17 more. Oops. Broadsword. Okay, uh, wow. Not a happy camper. Okay, uh, Raffin. Raffin. Raffin gets to swing at the York before it dies. 21. Plus four from the orc, minus. A seven for him is going to be a 14 on the plus six line is going to be a severe so he gets oops where are we? severe is going to be nine so ten points less six we so only does four or gets credit for four And of course, Gilder gets to swing. Uh, oh, I keep forgetting the extra minus five as well. Um, because of the multiple attackers or multiple, yeah, multiple opponents on the orc. And Gildor is doing 
subtracting six plus zero plus five, so minus 11, that's gonna be 19 on the plus three line. And that's gonna be hit. Gildor. What's that? Eight points, less four, so four points. Four points with his scimitar. Right. Phase one, round two. Uh, these orcs have swapped over to their swords and will be moving in as well. Uh, this guy is dead. Three. These will move as well. So let's see. Ten, twenty, five. Is oh, actually, before I move, any mana allocation. Hmm. Okay, so uh, mana allocation. Our illustrious wizard back here is actually going to start gathering mana. He has, one of the spells he has here is Lightning, so it's a base mana cost 6. He has EL2. He's an ML5 wizard, so ML5, EL2, he can gather 4 mana per phase. Base mana costs 6. Um, he'll need to gather for 3 phases if he wants to cast it at EL2 or two phases if he wants to cast it EL1. We'll likely cast it on the second phase at EL1. Goes. Right. Uh, missile fire, everybody's moving. And then we get into the movement melee. So these guys, one, five, ten, five, ten. Thirty. That was ten. We move up to there. Raffin moves up to there. There's in. And Gildor is actually going to use some. Actually, Gildor's going to stay back a bit and use his bow. Actually, I think he's up full mana, doesn't he? Yeah, he'll move up and do a bit of a usual spell. Probably do a smokeless flame, flame next phase. And that guy is, oops. That's 20 feet away. So, double check his smokeless flame. I prep for the next phase. His smokeless flame is now level two. Means he has a range of 30 feet. So that guy's within range. Cool. See how that goes. Okay. Uh, so he's moved. He's not doing anything else this round. 
Everybody else has moved and we can resolve our attacks. Let's once again zoom in a bit. And we'll start with Marizan as usual. Um, he is going to attack orc number number five. Raffin is going to attack number six in hopes that they can take him out in, in one round, one phase. Let's start with Marizan. So oh, Marizan, on the plus five line, attracting 13. Sixty-two. So what's that? Forty-nine. Shield hit. These guys do have shields. They're using. They are using banded heater shields, and have an EL three in shield. Did that normally? They would have the same EL across all the different. Um. He would, oh, hang on, uh, she's had to switch over to the regular Bastard Sword. That would have been... Let's say plus five, sixty, oh, yeah. with the minus seven, that's still a hit, a field hit. And she does d6 plus 3, which, unless she's rolling something high, doesn't damage the shield. Or not enough to give any consequence at this point. Uh, what else? Raffin on the plus 6 line. 27 is likely going to be hit, so he's subtracting. He is subtracting 11, heading back 4, subtracting 7. So yeah, that's a regular hit. And on a regular hit, he is doing a d6 plus 5, so that's 10 points, plus 6 for the natural army on armor. So 6, 6, 2. Orc number six. Okay, uh, let's see. Orc number five is attacking Marazan. Orc number five attacking Marizans. Plus V nine. Plus V six minus three line. Roll and see if he even gets close. Twenty five. That's going to be likely a shield hit. Marizans shield is three plus five plus two for the guy's sword skill. Plus three to that 28 yeah, shield hit. And off the shield. And on Raffin, number six swinging back at him, 32. On the minus three line. Totally watching things up here. Minus three line. Yeah, that's going to be field hit as well. Uh, five. Six points is going to bounce off his shield as well. And that is 
that phase. Oh, on to phase two. So mana allocation. Our wizard friend here is gathering another four points of mana for his lightning. He doesn't. Or actually, you know what? He's just going to get that spell off, and then he'll worry about what next spell he's going to work on. So, um, that costs him eight mana from his forty, and he is casting it against Raffin. So Raffin's MDV is three. Three sub. He's adding three to his roll, and he is subtracting the ML times two, so subtracting, which is subtracting four, so he nets out to minus one to his roll on the magic table here. So 63, two is going to be a failure. The spell basically has no effect on Raffin, or a spell actually fails, <laughs> doesn't go off. Um, this mana costs six. Even with uh, you can't get that spell uh, EL zero off in one phase either. So, guess he's gonna think of some other spell to use next round. And Gildor is also doing mana location. Oh, um. Uh, Kind of jumped ahead to the magic effect, but that's all right because there's no missile fire. So Gildor is going to do, like I said, smokeless flame. Gildor has a smokeless flame is a base mana cost four, and Gildor is gathering four mana per phase. Well, actually, he can get off his smokeless flame bef in the same same phase. At EL zero of effect. And he's casting at the orc. The orc. He's going to cast it at. You know what? He's going to try Kelgan. Um, what is his MDV? Kelgan's MDV is. Need to figure that out. E. It's like while I look them up again. All right, looking it up in the book here, MDV is supposed to be MEL times two, so it's 10 plus three, so 13. Like a bit of a risk. But, oh, what the heck? It works, it works. If not, it could screw himself. Um, he is subtracting his MDV, his EL times two. Oof. Oh, he is a link. Could have used it. That would have made a difference. be plus nine to his roll. So what's that? 47? 47 on the plus five line is going to be a success. He's got a name off on this on this guy. And what does for us? And at the same time, this guy's gathered the last of his mana for his lightning. He's casting that on Raffin. Well, let's do the smokeless flame. Heal zero smokeless flame. That is going to be 3d10. which is going to be 20 points. 
That's going to hurt. And this guy is casting his spell at Raffin. So his lightning goes off. Raffin's MTV is 3. Guy's EL is 2. So he's subtracting 1 from his roll. 52 on the. And he needed a 50. So he just missed. Or just, fit, just fails. So his spell has no effect. He's uh, subtracted 8 from his mana or casting ability. Oh, right. Gildor has you. Three. He's been four. Four points. And, uh... Yeah, so that's the uh, magic effect part of the phase, and now we get into the, the melee part. Melee. So, this guy moves up. He will probably go to th there. Um, he tries to go behind her, she'll shift, so keep her pacing as best she can. Um, just double. Part of the book here. Have our facings. Right. So the front, the front three flanks, rear quarters there, and rear at the back. So she's going to keep those guys in the front. If this guy was, like I said, to try and move back there, she would have shifted, and this guy would have shifted along with them, and they would have been a bit of a stalemate, regardless. He cast a spell. He is five, ten. He's moving to there. And the two of these guys attacking Raffin. And these two attacking Mirazan. These guys aren't doing anything. And we get into combat. Okay, Mirazan. You're on the plus plus five line. Seventy eight on the plus five is gonna be a miss, even with their minuses. Uh Raffin on the plus six line is gonna be a zero seven. Let's figure this one out. He's, there's adding four to his roll. And he's subtracting seven. So that's going to be a net seven. That's going to be a deadly hit. And Raffin does 3d10 plus 10 on a deadly. So 10, 27 points damage, less six, so 21 points damage. Weapon takes one. Did I say twenty-seven? So twenty ten percent chance of breaking. Twenty-three does not break. And number he was attacking number six before, so down number six to finish him off. Number six only had a uh, total of 14 points left. ETV minus 3, damage, damage tolerance value. 
we could go to minus three hit points. Um, total of 17 damage there, so Raffin with dead. Let's get rid of number six. And Goners, another little blat blitz bladder on the ground. And the two orcs, let's start with the two orcs on Marizan. They are going to be on the minus three line. OCD six, D nine, minus three line. Pull the tax first. 57 on the minus three is going to be a complete miss. And 20 on the minus three is going to be uh, potentially a hit. So they are subtracting two for the swords. So that's going to be 18, and she is adding 2 and 3, 5, so 23, minus 3 line. 23 is going to be a shield hit, and fairly certain these guys can't even, 7 points of damage needed to damage this. No damage to the shield. I can't remember if I rolled the second guy. Oh no, right. The first guy wild nest, second guy hit. So that was number five that hit. And the one orc on Rathen, who is on a minus three line as well. 67 is going to be a complete miss with whatever minuses you might have. And we are on to the next phase. So, oh, phase two, mana allocation. Ah, uh, you know what? Let's see, what does this guy want to do? Leeching? What does leeching do for us? Leeching. So, allows caster to consume the energy possessed by intelligent... Caster must touch him. Not close enough to touch. Okay, so that's leeching. Um, paralysis. Paralysis. Range EL plus one times two. So, uh, he would need to cast it at. This has a base mana cost three. And he gathers four per phase, so he would have to cast it at heal zero. Which means he's got a range of 40 feet with their in range. Duration um heal zero, so one so two phases. And maximum strength, EL plus one, 20. If the victim is strong, the EL is added to combat rolls. Movement rate is reduced by 50. Uh, he is going to try it on Raffin. Not gonna... Or is he gonna gather mana for another lightning? You know what? He's going to do another lightning. So he's gathering mana for lightning. And Gildor is going to gather mana for something else. Does Gildor want to do Well, there were a fire arrow. Base mana cost six. Gathering. Doesn't sound right. That not. Oh, eels. Eel.
Yo, one is still. Okay. So, um, arrows only do die ten, which isn't going to do enough to. Guess he's back to his trusty old smokeless flame, but he'll zero. So he's gathering four mana, takes four to cast, so he gets it off this phase. And he's going to use it on Elgin again, so mana, mana. So he is on the, once adding nine to his roll. 41, nice. That is another success on that spell. So that's two. And that's probably going to be enough to kill him. 3d10. They're all really bad. 18. He only had 30. 34 left. Oh, sorry. 14 left. So he is now gone. Well, let's remove our illustrious wizard. Bloop. No blood splatter there. And we get on to movement melee. So Raffin is swinging at number, actually number five. But number five is not wounded yet. Well, but that'll leave him a flank. Oh, actually, he faces that. He's at the front. If this guy was to move here, Raffin would move here. Follow. So essentially, the net of it is there's no point in moving. We start with Marizan. Oh, hang on. Yeah, we'd start with actually we start with Raffin. Keep forgetting Marizan's not using her magic sword, so her her attack priority is seven, which is still better than the nine that the orcs have. So Raffin is first. He will swing at number five. As will Marizan. He is on the Plus six line. And he's got minuses. Got before it gets negated by the guy's armor and shield skill. So he's doing minus twelve. So four. Uh deadly hit. Or sorry, severe hit. Twelve, yeah, four point uh, results in four. So yeah, severe hit, and he's doing a die ten plus nine on a severe, and the guy's subtracting six. That ends up being seven points of damage getting through on number five. Five by Raffin with his bastard sword. and. Marizan attacks him as well. She is subtracting, adding, uh, adding four, subtracting five and seven, so adding subtracting eight, and that's going to be a myth. Okay, orc number one. Work number one on the minus three line. E9. Even with a bunch of minuses, that's going to be a miss. Work number five on Marizan is going to be a miss. And work number two on Raffin. 84 is going to be a miss. Next phase. Gildor will move. Up to attack number one here. All right. 
So Gildor, so Mirzan goes first. He is on the bus line, I think. Yeah, five line. Seventy something. That's going to be a shield hit. I'm not going to worry about it. Gildor is plus V seven, DC V four. So he's on the plus three line. That one I'll have to figure out. So he is subtracting eleven. It's going to be eleven plus four, so sixteen. Plus three lines. Seventeen. That's going to be a regular hit. He is doing a d6 plus four on a regular. Hit. Uh, so three points of damage get through. Three Gildor is Imitar. Okay. Uh, Raffin is going to swing. Oh. Uh, and yeah, Raffin is going to swing at number two. Moving number two and he's dead. Yeah, I messed up. And I don't see number three on here, so obviously I killed the wrong one. Oh well. Um... This is number two now. He is still number one. He's still number five. Well, close enough. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, let's see. Uh, Raffin. Yeah, Raffin. He is a miss. Okay, orc number one is going to turn and switch his targets to Gildor. Orc number five is going to keep attacking Marizan, and orc number two is going to keep attacking Raffin. So orc number one, uh, 75 is going to be a miss. Orc number five, 58 is going to be a miss. And 47 is probably going to be a miss. I think Raffin between weapon skill of two and Raffin's shield skill of roll of four added to the roll. It's going to be uh, 49. Right, next phase. I've something in the back of my mind saying I screwed up on the on Gildor moving and attacking this phase, but oh well. Again, close enough. Um they okay, let's start with Gildor. 93 is gonna be miss. Mirzan attacking the same one as Gildor is gonna be a miss. Raffin. Holy smokes. What kind of rolls are these? Orc number one. That's gonna be miss. Orc number Five, that's going to be a miss. And 83, that's going to be a miss as well. We just fly through these phases. Um, okay, Marizan and Gildor attacking orc number one. Let's start with Gildor. That's going to be a miss. Raffin is the next fastest. 62 on the plus six line. With his minuses is going to be a shield hit. And Marizan, three. There we go. Now we're talking. He is subtracting oh, a whole bunch. Uh, plus four, minus the six, minus the seven, minus the five. That's going to be 14 off a roll. Yeah, that's going to be a deadly. Not what she wanted. Point. What deadly is going to be 3d10 plus 11. That's not bad. 14. Um, 25. 
25 is going to be another point of damage. It's not. It is over. Did not break her sword. Oh, sorry. I just... Okay. Oh, plus eight. Uh, read that one up. Anyways, didn't break the, the sword. Uh, her, bra her bastard sword. Did one point of damage to it. And I don't remember what I rolled on the 3d10, but it's going to be enough to kill the guy regardless. Two. He's done 17 points. Marazan with the asteroids. And works right back. As soon as I get rid of number one. Okay, orc number five brings it Marazan. Going to be a miss with an 80 something or 70 something even with minuses. 55 on Raffin, on the minus three line, I think it was, going to be a miss. And then we get into round three, phase one. You will move up and attack orc number five, with the two of them on them. Yield our swings. Two. Gonna be a shield hit at best. With a bunch of minuses. Not gonna worry about it. Uh, Raffin swings at his orc. And he misses again. Crappy rolls here. Marazan. 23 with various and sundry minuses on the plus three line. No, plus uh, five line. Maybe we got to write these down or something. So, uh, 18. No. 18 minus 4. 14? Yeah, 14. So that is going to be a 9. It's going to be a severe hit. E10 plus 7. Uh, was doing a total of five damage. I mean, armor, helmet, and natural armor value, so five damage. Number five. Okay. Raff and hit that one. Oh, he swung at it. Oh, they're right. It's right next to him. Never mind. Okay. Um, work number five swings at Marazan again. Oops. 74 is going to be a miss. And number two, 10. Might actually be a hit. Nice three line, 10. Some pluses. Going to be a hit. D6 plus 1, I think. Oops, strength bonus 0, strength 1, so 4 points. And Marizan has chainmail. So his chain takes 1 damage. He takes 4, takes 1, one damage. Right, phase two of round three. Gildor, come on, buddy. Wow. Uh, going to do Mirzan's roll just because we're here. That's going to be uh, another 14, so that's a 10 on the plus five line. That's going to be another severe hit. 
And she is doing a d10 plus 7. So last 6 damage for so 7 points get through. That's a total of 17. He is at 0. Falls to the ground. Where he will likely be finished. Um, just consider him dead at this point. And uh, Raffin swings at his. 3. That's going to be a deadly. On the plus five line, or six line, I mean, and he's got at least minus minus seven to his roll, plus minus seven plus four from the minus three. Oh, yeah, and a whole bunch of minus the minuses. So, 3d10 plus 10. 13, 23. Point damage for 23. It's going to be a 6% chance of breaking. 81 to break. And he's basically finished off the last points on this guy. Dead number two, he had eleven hit points left, so Raffin with And that finishes off all of our creatures here. So I will Uh, let's do let's quickly do some experience uh, or particularly I, I've been through the experience for the other guys here the, the regular combat experience numerous times I'll add that up offline here but uh, what I will walk through is Raffin's or sorry Gildor's magic experience because it's going to be pretty hefty with an MDV of 13 um, so his magic experience gain is going to be the victim's MDV Times the eel of the spell plus two. So he's going to be getting. Now the 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 question here is that the eel that the that he knows the spell at, or is it the eel that he actually casts the spell? At? And I don't think the rules are are particularly clear because you're what he's he's got. Um, even though he's cast the spell at a lower EL, he he knows that he's got EL2 in, in Smokeless Flame. And the rules, flip over to the rules for a sec. Oh, magic experience. Oh, where's the experience gain? If I remember correctly, that was back in book one. Was it book one? Let's pause here for a sec while I go look for it. Okay, so I found it here. Um, I'm going to say it's the eel that he's actually cast the spell at rather than the skill level that he's got in the spell itself. So he cast it eel zero, so he's getting the MDV times two magic experience. The MDV being 13, so he's going to get 26 magic experience for each success of the smokeless flame, which was twice. And he gets the MDV times 2, which again is 26, twice for the two successes of the spell 
um, on on that other magic eater. Had he cut the extra phases and cast it at EL2, and that's not even using his language, he would have gotten four times 13. What was that 52? Twice. Well, that would have been a hell of a lot more. But anyways, that's going to be uh, 52 magic experience points and three characteristics. It's per 25 with no minimum. How bad it works. And so we'll uh, add all that in next time around. The characters will spend a little bit of time gathering up any of the uh, equipment that might be useful off these orcs and the magic user. As they actually search over the magic user's body, they find that he had uh, he was wearing chainmail. Uh, he had a metal heater shield that he had strapped on his back as he come out here, and he had a broadsword at his side, none of which was magical. And uh, when they go head towards the building, assuming uh, they're going to be searching the building. Um, before they go and check out what's what, what's happening with that cave back there. Uh, in the building itself, they find uh, it's it is a two story building up on the second floor in one of the rooms, which must have been uh, this wizard's room. They find a little stash of um, treasure, uh, five gold coins, 21 silver coins, a gold ring worth 32 silver coins, a gem, a medium sized gem, nearly flawless, average clarity uh, sapphire with no star form for 16 silver coins, jewel, uh, medium sized, nearly flawless, average clarity topaz with it's worth 24 silver coins and a piece of jewelry with a small minimal flaws um, fine clarity opal worth 20 silver coins so they will I think um, not sure if I want to give the metal heater shield to Marizan or to Raffin about the better port. Uh, actually, Raffin, I guess, will take the metal heater sheet. Has a little bit more carrying capacity than, uh, than Marizen does. And she will put her broken sword away somewhere, or pick it up off the ground and put it away, and probably grab the broadsword off of the dead body of the magic user, or the wizard. And we'll, we'll wrap it up here for the day. So next time they will start looking at exploring what's in the cave. And uh, we'll go from there. So again, thanks for joining me, everyone. And I'm, hopefully you're finding this at least somewhat interesting as we make our way through different combats. Um, I'd actually expect a little bit more out of this magic user, but... Uh, Guess it doesn't help when he fails his spells. Uh, getting spells off on on when you're kind of a low-level magic user is, is pretty tough in this game. Um, surprised uh, Gildor actually succeeded twice as he did. Uh, got lucky on his rolls there, Con considering how badly the percentile rolls are going for all the combat swings. Guess that makes up for it. Anyways, thanks again. Talk to you later.